بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله in the name of Allah and all praise is due to Allah may the peace and blessings and praise be upon his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam my dear brothers and sisters as you already know the topic that I'll be speaking about today is the dangers of the tongue the dangers of the tongue a very very important topic and something with it which is of extreme importance to the well-being of a person in this world and in the hereafter and there is a lot a lot of textual proofs from the Quran and from the Sunnah that shed light on the tongue on the tongue whether in a good manner or in good light or in bad light and this is what we're going to be inshallah shedding light on today the dangers of the tongue due to it being the reason and downfall for many of our brothers and sisters and due to uh, not only in this world but in the hereafter and I want to start my talk with two important narrations that have been narrated about one of the great Sahabas Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu wa arda. The first of those narrations is his saying, Wallahi, alladhi la ilaha illa hu, ma shay'un ahakku li tuli sajnin min hadha. Wa ashara ila lisani. He says, by Allah, the one and only true God worthy of being worshipped. There is, or there needs to be, or there is nothing on the face of the earth that truly needs to be imprisoned for a long time than this. And he pointed to his tongue. Focus on those important words to show you the deep understanding of this great Sahaba concerning the dangers of the tongue. He says, by Allah, the one who truly deserves to be worshipped, the true God who deserves to be worshipped, there is nothing on the face of the earth that truly deserves to be imprisoned for a long time then this and he pointed to his tongue in another of the narrations that has been narrated about him radiyallahu an he says al bala'u muqalun bil mantiq tests and trials are connected and tied to what you say, what you utter, what comes out of your mouth. Again, tests and trials that you go through in this world and he's alluding also to the hereafter. Depends on what you utter, what comes out of this mouth. Okay. So these are two very, very important narrations concerning this great Sahabi, uh, this scholar amongst the Sahaba. What do they entail? What is Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu wa arda trying to inform us or tell us? He's trying to tell us something very, very important. And that is his deep understanding of this dangerous limb and its defects and if you were to ponder deeply over these words of his 
there's no wonderment or amazement. Why this great scholar, this great man, this great companion said such words? Very simply, due to the issue that this tongue is the main instigator of a lot of problems for many people, individually, communally, socially. The tongue is the main instigator in causing problems. And yes, it will also be the main instigator in causing problems for you on the day of judgment. So basically, what Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu is saying to you, in a nutshell, is safeguard, preserve, protect, control your tongue at all times. If you want salvation, if you want salvation. Okay. Again, as I said, there's no wonderment or amazement in Ibn Mas'ud's words because they conf confirm what has come in the Sunnah. The Prophet وسلم, says in the authentic hadith, أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَا إِبْنُ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ أَكْثَرُ خَطَايَا إِبْنُ آدَمْ فِي لِسَانِهِ the most sins committed by the son of Adam, by a person, is through his tongue. That's a, a clear hadith. That this tongue is the instigator, is behind the majority of sins in a person. And this may explain that important saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherein he said إِذَا تَزَوَّجَ بِنُ آدَمْ أَوْ تَزَوَّجَ الْعَبْدِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ نِصْفَ الدِّينِ فَلْيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِي النِصْفِ الْبَاقِي Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a beautiful hadith which a lot of us probably have come across and heard but we don't understand or we didn't comprehend it properly Prophet ﷺ says in this beautiful hadith, when the servant of Allah gets married, he has, when the servant of Allah, the slave of Allah gets married, he has completed half of his religion. Let him fear Allah in the next half. You know what scholars derived from this? They derived that the two main downfalls of a person concerning his religion are through his private parts and through his tongue. By getting married, he would have safeguarded his what? His private parts, which is one of the major uh, one of the major causes of a person entering the hellfire, as we are going to see. So what's the other major limb that causes a person to enter the hellfire? His tongue. So if you can protect and safeguard and control your sexual desire, and you can do that by getting married, all you have to do now is control the other limb, and that is your tongue by making sure that it only speaks that which is good. Dhikr, dua, Quran, reconciling between people, etc., etc. Keeping away from the haram, from obscene talk, slander, backbiting, huh? false testimony, false accusations, Lying, etc., etc. And as I said, yani, uh, this hadith now and the previous hadith may explain 
the important words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was asked, what is, in, in, in the Arabic language, سُئِلَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا أَكْثَرُ مَا يُدْخِلُ النَّارُ قَالَ الْأَجْوَفَانِ الْفَمُ وَالْفَرْجِ Once the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, what is the thing that mostly, yani what is the thing, the sin, or the action or deed, or the limb that mostly enters a person, the hellfire? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the two hollow ones, the mouth, meaning the tongue, and the private parts. These are the two main limbs in a person that enter him, the hellfire. As we said earlier, you can protect your private parts, control your sexual desires by putting it, directing it in lawful means by getting married. And now you have to play a role in controlling and safeguarding and preserving your tongue by keeping it away from the haram. If you were to do that, bi'ithnillah, uh, paradise is guaranteed for you. Because the Prophet sallallahu says in another very important hadith, مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْ وَلِحْيَيْ أَضْمَنُ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ He who can guarantee me to preserve and protect that which is between his two legs, meaning his private parts, and that which is between his two jaws, meaning his tongue, I will guarantee him paradise. And that shows you, my dear brothers, how important this topic that we are speaking about, how important it is to control and preserve and safeguard and protect your tongue from falling into the haram. Yani, after what you've heard, it's, it now becomes obvious to you that it's an obligation upon you, my dear brother and sister, to safeguard and protect your tongue at all times. And this is evidenced and emphasized in the Quran and in the Sunnah of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Almighty says in his holy book, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ A person does not utter a word except that there is a watcher and an observer over him. Huh? Waiting to what? Kiraman in, in the other verse, Kiraman katibin يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ Noble guardians over you. Kiram and Katibi, noble riders. They know what you do. Uh, subhanallah. Always have in the back of your mind that there are guardians, two guardians, two angels. Noble writers, noble scribes amongst the angels that write your good deeds and bad deeds. That will write everything that will come out of this tongue. That should be a sufficient deterrent for you to watch over your tongue, to preserve and safeguard your tongue, to know what comes out of your tongue, to control what comes out, out of your tongue. Because everything will be a witness for you or against you from what comes out of this tongue. And subhanAllah, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in many chapters in the Quran, He alludes to the importance of the tongue, of what you utter. If you to look in uh, yani, uh, Surah Luqman, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Mu'mineen, Surah Al-Furqan, uh, Al uh, uh, and other surahs, 
you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني, always alludes uh, to the tongue such, uh, such a verse is وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ And those who keep away from obscene talk, idle talk. In another verse, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَ Say that which is good. Say that which is good to people. When you speak to people, speak in a respectful, uh, in a respectful manner. Speak nice words to them. Not abusive, uh, slandering, cursing, threatening. That's not a characteristic of a believer. In another verse, in the Ankar al Aswati la Sautul Hamir. In Surah Luqman, the worst of voices are the voices of the donkeys. It's no good screaming and shouting. That's not going to get, get you anyway. In another verse, لا يسخر قوم من قوم Surah Al-Hujurat لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكون خيرا منهم Do not mock and belittle people. Look down upon people. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That person might be better than you. And it's not part of a characteristic of a, of a believer, a true believer to mock and belittle and look down and despise people. It should be humble at all times. And the Almighty teaches us, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The best of you in the sight of Allah is who? Is he who is a doctor or an engineer? Huh? Or a white man or a black man or this race or that race? Huh? Or an Arab or a non Arab? The best of you in the sight of Allah is he who is most pious. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Surah Al-Furqan وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ If the ignorant speak to them in an arrogant manner, what do they say? They say peace. They don't reply with ignorance and arrogance. Because we are taught not to behave huh? and, or not to treat others the way they treat us. We're to abide by the Quranic teachings, the prophetic teachings. We don't treat and behave in a manner that people treat us or behave towards us. They're not the measurement. The measurement is the Quran and Sunnah of our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And for this reason, my dear brothers. And sisters, nothing is equivalent or compares to being on the safe side. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ الْيَصْمُطْ He who believes in Allah, truly believes in Allah and the last day, the day of judgment, should say something that is good and or what? Remain silent. Keep silent. There's nothing equivalent to being on the safe side, to protecting yourself. Nothing equivalent and equal to being on the safe side. You don't have to speak. A lot of our brothers and sisters think you know, when there's people around or if people, you know, have a go at them or what have you, they have to reply back. They have to speak. They have to. No, you don't have to. It's always better to take this advice on board. The advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Either say something good or keep silent. Saying something good, inshallah, you'll be rewarded for it. Say, uh, keeping silent. You're saved from falling into sin. 
You're saved from saying a, 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 a haram word, abusive word, foul language, cursing, swearing, abusing, etc. Either say something good or keep silent. They're the two options. That third option is not on as a true believer. And the Prophet Sallallahu in another hadith to emphasize this says, Kafa bil mar'i kathiban an yuhaddifa bi kulli ma sama. Kafa, it is sufficient for a person to be labeled a liar if he were to uh, narrate everything he, he hears. And subhanAllah, that's a sickness in, in, in some people. Whatever they hear from brothers, sisters, they go out and straight away, you know, uh, speak it, spread it. And sometimes not paying attention that what they're spreading, what they're speaking could cause harm, could cause conflict, hatred, enmity. That's why we go back and say, subhanAllah, there's nothing. That is equivalent or compares with being on the safe side as the Prophet wasallam taught he. Okay. We informed you earlier that if you can safeguard your private parts from falling into the haram and safeguard your tongue, you are what? Guaranteed paradise. What do we derive from that? We derive that these are two prerequisites for entering paradise. Two conditions. A condition or a prerequisite for you to enter paradise is to save yourself from to protect and safeguard your tongue from falling into the haram. And this is emphasized in another very important hadith wherein the Prophet وسلم, was asked by a sahabi, Akhbirni bi amalin yudkhiluni al jannah wa yubaiduni min al nar. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, laqad sa'alta an azim, aw an shay'in azim. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Subhanallah, the Sahaba, رضي الله عنهم, uh, they always used to look forward to the hereafter. And their questions to the Prophet ﷺ were always concerning the hereafter. What would save them from the hellfire? What would enter them paradise? What would bring them closer to Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would increase their iman? Huh? And not worldly talk and idle talk and nonsense talk. They'd always want to benefit from the Prophet. So this great Sahabi, uh, عن, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, عن, asked the Prophet, O oh, Prophet of Allah, inform me of an action that will end to me paradise. And push me away or save me from the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu replies back and says to him, you have asked about something great. And it is easy for the one whom Allah makes easy upon. And then he goes on to say, أَن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيَّةً وَتُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةُ وَتُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةُ uh, and he informs him about the pillars of Islam, uh, that you worship Allah alone without associating any partners, that you uh, perform and observe the prayer, uh, perform and observe the zakat, perform and observe the hajj, etc. And the fasting and what have you. And then he informs him of other deeds and actions. Then he says in, that, in this same hadith, this is where I want you to focus on, أَفَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى مَلَاكِ ذَلِكَ قُلِّهِ Prophet says, 
ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك قله Shall I not inform you what perfects and completes all this that I've mentioned for you? In all these ibadat, all these worships and pillars and obligations that I mentioned to you, what perfects it and completes it? He says, Kultu, Mu'adh radiallahu anhu said, Yes, O Prophet of Allah, inform me what perfects and completes all this. Because a lot of brothers and sisters, they pray and fast. You know, do hajj and give zakat. But they might not perfect these obligations and these pillars. What perfects it and completes it? He says, Restrain this, control this. And he pointed to his tongue. Restrain it, control it from falling into the haram. This is what will perfect all your ibadahs. And which will lead you to paradise. So only say that which is good. Use it and utilize it in that which will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prohibit it and prevent it from falling into the haram. Restrain it from lying, from abusing, from slandering, from backbiting, from malicious gossip, from, from, from. The Mu'adh was astonished or he was shocked. He said, Ya Rasulullah, awa mu'akhaduna bima natakallam? Yani, will we be taken for what we say? For what we speak? For what comes out of this tongue? Prophet Sallallahu says, Thakulatka ummuka ya mu'ad. Wa hal yaqubbu al-nasu, al-nasa fi al-nari ala wujuhihim, aw manakhirihim, illa hasaidu al-sinatihim. Subhanallah. He says, May your mother lose you, O Mu'adh. Isn't it that through the tongue and what the tongue has instigated, that the people will be thrown on their faces and on their noses into the hellfire? Subhanallah. That should really put fear in each and every one of us. That the main instigator, the main limb that will enter people, uh, that will throw people into the hellfire on their faces, is the tongue. Is the tongue. And what has come out of the tongue. The tongue, my dear brothers and sisters, is so dangerous to the point that all the limbs in the body, all the limbs, see all our limbs in the body, they fear it. As the Prophet ﷺ informs us in the following hadith, إِذَا أَصْبَحَ إِبْنُ آدَمَ فَإِنَّ الْأَعْضَاءَ قُلَّهَ تُكَفِّرُ اللِّسَانِ فَتَقُولْ إِتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِينَا فَإِنْ إِسْتَقَمْ فَإِنَّ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ بِكْ فَإِنْ إِسْتَقَمْتْ إِسْتَقَمْنَا وَإِنْ إِعْوَجَشْتْ إِعْوَجَشْنَا When the son of Adam wakes up in the morning, all the bodily parts humble themselves before the tongue. And they say to him, Fear Allah through us or with us. For we are followers of you. We follow you. If you are upright, we are, are, we are upright. And if you are corrupt, if you go astray, we will go astray. We will be corrupted. Subhanallah. Every morning, that's what happens. With the limbs. They humble themselves in front of the the tongue. And they say, Fear Allah with us. We are followers of you. If you are upright, we are upright. If you are corrupt and go astray, we will go corrupt and astray.
And this is why, my dear brothers and sisters, the best and most perfect of Muslims in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who protect and safeguard their tongues. The best huh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does the Prophet ﷺ say about this? He says, Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. A true Muslim is he whom the Muslims are safe from his tongue and his hands. Meaning, he doesn't abuse them through his tongue, hurt them, injure them through his tongue. Nor through his hands. Doesn't go about hitting, bashing people, hitting people with his hands. And the Prophet ﷺ was also asked in another authentic hadith, Ayyul Muslimina Afdal. Who are the best of Muslims? He said, Man salim al Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi. The Prophet was asked, Who is the best of Muslims? And he answered, he whom the Muslims are safe from his tongue and hands. From his tongue and hands. Can we move on to another important point which the Sunnah also shed light on? And that is that this tongue, my dear brothers, is so dangerous uh, and I want you to ponder over this very carefully because this is yani, in the core of this lesson. Or well, this is at the core of this lesson because we are talking about the dangers of the tongue. This tongue is so dangerous that a word, one word you may utter can enter you the hellfire. How many years? One word, the Prophet Sallallahu says, you may utter out of Allah's displeasure, not knowing its significance, not knowing its repercussions, not knowing its gravity, and how dangerous this word was that you uttered can end to you the hellfire. Seventy years. Allahu Akbar. Inna rajul لا يتكلم بالكلمة من سخط الله لا يلك لها بال تهوي بها تهوي به في نار جهنم سبعين خد. A person may utter a word out of Allah's displeasure. لا يلك لها بال doesn't give it significance, doesn't know its repercussions, doesn't know how dangerous this word was how much injury it may have caused how much damage it may have caused it makes him enter the hellfire for how many years 70 years my dear brothers how scary is that how dangerous is that how much are we in need of really taking heed and not being careless and negligent of this dangerous limb. Okay. I want to go very quickly through some hadiths that shed light on how dangerous the tongue can be. And uh, you know, you'd be amazed at how much hadiths there are out there concerning this issue. But I just want to run through with you uh, and shed light on some hadiths that show you the consequences and dangers uh, of this tongue. The Prophet says in one of the authentic hadiths, 
من قال في مؤمن ما ليس فيه أسكنه الله رضغة الخبال حتى يخرج مما قال He whom accuses a Muslim untruthfully will be made by Allah to dwell in the hell fire flowing living in the pus and blood of the people of the fire on the day of judgment until he retracts his statement this is what falsely accusing a brother and or a sister of yours untruthfully accusing them of doing something or saying something which they didn't do or say what's the punishment for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a, a, a punishment awaiting for you uh, there's a special place in the hell fire where the pus and blood of the people of the fire gathers Allah will put you in that pus and blood in that filth We also have come across, and I'm sure you've heard of this hadith, have you pondered over it? And that it's a fruit of the tongue. What is that? The Prophet ﷺ once was walking in the graveyard and he said about two graves. Two graves. إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٌ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بِالنَّمِيمَةِ Prophet ﷺ once was walking in the graveyard and he came across two graves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge of what was happening in these two graves. They were being punished. He said, these two people are being punished and they're not being punished for something big. One of them was heedless about preventing urine from getting on his clothes. He didn't. Uh, there was najasa. He didn't take precaution in cleaning himself properly when ur urinating or when defecating. He wouldn't clean himself properly and it would come on his clothes. And the other he used to walk with malicious gossip gossiping about people, causing fitna between people. Huh? What's that? That's due to the tongue. He comes to this person. Oh, this person said this about you. And he goes to the other person. Oh, he said this about you. And what happens? Fitna. Enmity, hatred huh? between brothers. Malicious gossip. What is it? What's happening to him? He's been punished in his grave before the hereafter. So if you want to save yourself from the punishment of the grave, make sure that you don't indulge in this uh, malicious gossip, in backbiting and slandering people, in being two-faced, in causing fitna between people, between your own brothers and sisters. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in another hadith, Sibabu al-Muslim fusuk wa qitaluhu kufur. Abusing a Muslim is an evil doing. And killing him is disbelief. But look at that. Sibabu al-Muslim. Abusing your Muslim brother. What is it? What action? Is a category, it's an evil action, it's an evil deed, Prophet وسلم, says. I keep away from abusing your Muslim brothers and sisters, my dear brothers. In another hadith, and this is dangerous also, keep away from indulging in such actions. If one of you 
says to his brother in Islam, you are a disbeliever, then one of them will certainly deserve the title. If the addressee is so, as he has asserted, the disbelief of the man is confirmed. But if it is untrue, it will come back to him. That's the danger of proclaiming kufr over your Muslim brothers and or sisters. It will come back on you. It will come back on you. But how dangerous is that? Prophet sallallahu alayhi says in another hadith, لا يدخل الجنة نمام نمام Gossiper, one who uh, indulges in malicious gossip, slandering people, being two-faced, causing fitna between people, does not enter paradise due to an action of the tongue. The Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, which you may have come across, and it also relates to the tongue. Shall I not inform you of the greatest, of the major sins? He named the, this type of sin as being the greatest of the major sins. So there's major sins. And there's the greatest of the major sins, the worst of those major sins. Obviously on the top of that list is al-ishraqu billah. Committing polyth polytheism, shirk. Billah. That's why, my dear brothers, it's so important that you single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship. Because that's the sin that Allah will never forgive if you die upon it. All your worship Prayer, bowing, prostrating, dua, vows, oaths, sacrifice should be directed to Allah and Allah alone. You never single out anyone or direct your worship to anyone besides Him, the Almighty. No prophets, angels, jinn, saints, graves. We have not been created to worship the created. We have been created to worship the who? The creator. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's always the top and major sin. Then the Prophet Sallallahu says, and then uquq al-walidain, being undutiful, disrespectful to your parents. That's another one of the, the greatest of the major sins. And then he says, uh, the, the narrator says, the Prophet was lying down and then he got up. And he says, Allah wa qawlu al-zur wa shahadat al-zur wa qawlu al-zur wa shahadat al-zur wa qawlu al-zur wa shahadat al-zur The author goes, Oh my God, uh, uh, the Prophet wasn't going to stop. Kept on repeating it. Kept on repeating it. Huh? Forged statement and false witness. Forged statement and false witness. And this is all a product of the tongue. Forging statements and false, being false witness. Oh, I saw someone do this, and he really didn't do it. Huh? And then you take the right of that person. Someone else takes his right due to your witness, to, to your false witness. Huh? Or you write a forged statement, as happens sometimes in the courts, when witnessing against each other, or for someone, or against someone. That's why my dear brothers, Islam teaches that you are supposed to speak the truth even if it is against who? Your own self, subhanAllah. Let alone your father and your mother and your brother and your sister and your cousins and relatives. Because a true believer fears Allah first and foremost and seeks Allah's rewards and seeks Allah's pleasure before, before anything. The qawl al-zur, wa shahadat al-zur, forging false statements, accusing people, being a false witness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in another hadith, 
اجتنبوا السبع الموبقات keep away from the seven destructive sins sins which will destroy you in this world and in the hereafter you'll pay the consequences for these sins seven destructive sins because they warrant you to enter the hellfire on the day of judgment and they warrant from Allah to punish you severely here in this world before you pass away keep away from the seven destructive sins of course he mentions a shirk billah again shirk committing polytheism and then magic and then killing a soul innocently and eating the orphan's food uh, eating the orth orphan's wealth taking usury interest it's one of the destructive sins keep away from it and running away from the battlefield another destructive sin and the sin that we want to shed light on is the following slandering chaste women who are innocent believers slandering a chaste woman uh, accusing her of zina accusing her of a being with a man this is one of the great sins i saw i huh falsely and you know what subhanallah with this particular issue if you want to accuse a woman, a chaste woman, of zina, it's not sufficient for you as a witness to be one witness. You need how many? You need three others with you. You need four witnesses. If you don't have four witnesses, what's your punishment? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءِ فَاجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَ Those who accuse slander, a chaste woman, of zina, and they don't come with four witnesses, and with three others besides them, then lash them, how many? Eighty lashes. That's their punishment here, in this world. Huh? And... Prophet Sallallahu says, uh, they're destroyed on the day of judgment. They will be destroyed by entering billah, the fire due to this act, which is an act of the tongue. Because it's false testimony. Okay. Subhanallah. I want you also to ponder over this example now that happened at the time of the Prophet وسلم, which shows you how dangerous this tongue can be and how dangerous a tongue or what comes out of a tongue is or can be. And this happened, believe it or not, to the mother of the believers. Aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha. What did she say? She said about one of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, Safiya. رضي الله عنها حسبك يا رسول الله منها كذا وكذا يعني أنها قصيرة سبحان الله when you think of what she said I think it's not that big but look what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said about those words that she said she said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم it's sufficient for you a prophet of Allah and Safiya is, you know, not as good as me and other women. That she's short in stature. She's short in stature. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? لَكَدْ قُلْتِ كَلِمَ لَوْ مُزِجَتْ بِمَاءِ الْبَحْرِ لَمَزَجَتْ You have said a word that if it were to be put in the sea, it would pollute it. It would pollute the sea. Because it's a, a word of what? Huh? 
It's demeaning, it's mocking, it's belittling. Uh, she's sure. Uh, it's not a good word. The Prophet ﷺ said, that word that you said, oh Aisha, if it was thrown into the ocean, into the sea, it would pollute it. Subhanallah. If I look at sometimes how careful we have to be, my dear brothers, concerning what comes out of this mouth of ours. How many words have we said which are similar to this concerning our brothers and sisters? Which are worse than this. Short, he's too short or too tall or fat or skinny or... Huh? In a demeaning way, is something dangerous. How about saying worse than that? Or stronger words than that? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And due to the dangers of the tongue, and due to that one word that may enter a person the depths of the hellfire this may explain and or shed light on the prophet saying when he was asked what is the most what is the thing that you most fear for a person subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked this question what is the thing that you most fear for a person? And one of the Sahabas actually asked him that question directly. Ya Rasulullah, ma akhwafu ma takhafu alay. What is the most thing that you fear for me? Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He took he took his tongue and he said, "Hath." Took his tongue and he said, "This. This is what I fear most for you." And it makes sense now, after knowing what the tongue can cause, and that it is the main cause for people to enter the hellfire. Everyone should fear it. Everyone should really huh, take heed and take control and preserve and observe his tongue at all times, protect it and safeguard it from falling into the haram. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu was talking about, one day he was talking about trials and tribulations. And he was asked, and during trials, during the times of fitan, during times of trials and tribulations, uh, what's, uh, what's the best way out? How do we safeguard ourselves during times of trials and tri tribulations? What's our salvation? What's our way out? The Prophet ﷺ also alluded to the tongue. When he was asked by the Sahaba, Ya Rasulullah, man najat? And the Prophet mentioned the trials and tribulations. He said, how do we safeguard ourselves? How do we save ourselves? What's the means to salvation? He said, Amsik alayka lisanak. Take control of your tongue. Amsik alayka lisanak. Take control of your tongue. Wal yasa'ka baytuka. Wabki ala khatiyatik. Now, this is two extra advices. Suffice yourself, your house. Times of fitan, times of trials and tribulations. Stick to your house and cry over your sins. Take control of your tongue. Safeguard your tongue. Keep to your house and cry over your sins. That's what you do at times of what? Fitter. You don't go out and indulge huh? and partake in the fitan.
And the Prophet ﷺ also said in another hadith, مَنْ وَقَاهُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَشَرَّ مَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ He whom Allah protects him from the evils of his tongue and the evils of his private parts will enter paradise. He whom Allah protects him, safeguards him from the evils of his tongue and the evils of his private parts will enter paradise. After listening to this, uh, and I say this is yani, probably a one percenter, I only shed light on probably one percent of the textual proofs that allude to the dangers of the tongue. But subhanAllah, now, now you probably uh, understood or understand the importance of Ibn Mas'ud's words at the beginning. Huh? Tests and trials are connected to what comes out of your mouth. And when he swore by Allah that there is nothing on the face of the earth that needs a long imprisonment, then the tongue. You can now understand how our pious predecessors understood the dangers of this tongue and how they gave a huge weight to it and huge importance and emphasis to it what would shock you is another saying of our pious predecessor and one of the greatest of the pious predecessors as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu arda abu bakr the greatest man amongst this ummah after the Prophet ﷺ. What did he have to say about this dangerous limb? He said, uh, it has been authentically narrated about him, that he caught his tongue one day and he said, Allahu Akbar. This is Abu Bakr Siddiq, my dear brothers and sisters. Siddiq al ummah the most pious, the most knowledgeable, the greatest amongst this ummah after the Prophet ﷺ. What did he say? He took hold of his tongue and he said, This has led me to destruction. Allahu Akbar. If a Siddiq is saying such a word, then how about us? Wallahi, that's scary. That should really, that is a real wake-up call for us, my dear brothers and sisters. A real wake-up call for us. This is a Siddiq, radiallahu an, who's been given the glad tidings of paradise without reckoning, without hisab, saying this word about himself. And that it's caused in problems it's caused injury and hurt between him and certain people how about us how about us how much injury and hurt and harm has it caused between us and others due to our negligence in not taking control in not observing in not restraining our tongue from evil, from foul language. Therefore, in conclusion, my dear brothers and sisters, a true Muslim must safeguard his tongue at all times and be careful not to fall into evil and idle talk, slander, curse, abuse, foul language, obscene and dirty, dirty talk, false testimony, false witness, accusing falsely, chaste woman, believing woman, and other, many other sins that this tongue can commit. 
or make him him. I leave you with the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again, which and wherein he said, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, falyakul khayran, aw liyasmut." He who truly believes in Allah and the last day, the day of judgment, should say something that is good and or keep silent. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says a very important hadith. لَيْسَ الْمُسْلِمْ لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا الْلَعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِيءِ a true believer is not one who abuses, curses, slanders, uses foul language. This is not part of the characteristic uh, morals of a true believer. And we've got to take careful note of this. Because we have lived, we have been brought up in a non-Muslim country. And we've probably been accustomed, sometimes a habit and a tradition and a custom, especially at school, to abuse and swear and curse. And, and then to carry on this character in our latter life, in our old age. But remember, my dear brothers, a Muslim is unique in his character. And he rectifies and reforms himself. He always works to better himself. Doesn't remain upon bad habits, bad customs, bad traditions, bad morals. And it's unfortunate that I have come across this or come across it Sometimes on a daily basis, when I do cancelling, subhanAllah, I actually witness this with my own eyes and ears. And it's so sad to see this between couples. Yes, even worse, religious, so-called religious couples. Brothers and sisters. We're supposed to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who pray. Some of them even wear, subhanAllah, some of the sisters, the niqab. And they're in front of me when they talk to each other. They're talking as if you're talking to gangsters. The back streets. Using real foul language. That I cannot Yani, uh, say to you this foul language because it's it's not befitting of a Muslim to use such foul language it's between husband and wife now unfortunately it's happening even with kids towards their parents let alone amongst their brothers and sisters and cousins relatives and neighbors as a Muslim you are unique you are a role model for others should never ever let a person turn away from Islam due to your character due to your words or you will be partly to blame on the day of judgment but always be careful on how you conduct and carry yourself wherever you are especially what comes out from this mouth from this tongue of yours. The Prophet وسلم, says in another authentic hadith, and this is the last hadith that I'll be narrating to you. Ma shay'un athqalu fi mizan al mu'min yawm al qiyama min khuluqin hasan wa inna allaha la yubghidu al fahish al badhi. There is nothing on the day of judgment that is heavier on the scale than good morals. Good character. Huh? But concerning our lesson for tonight, the Prophet says, What? Wa inna Allah 
Indeed, Allah the Almighty is angered by the shameless, obscene person. Person who uses foul language. Allah is angered. Allah hates, detests a person who uses foul, obscene language. And that, subhanAllah, should be enough and sufficient as a deterrent. If Allah hates the person who uses foul and obscene language, you should be the first one to keep away from it. To implement it. And keep away from it. So, be careful, my dear brothers, and always, at all times, protect and safeguard and uh, control your tongues wherever you are. Uh, wherever you are. Uh, and know that the tongue, subhanAllah, is a double-edged sword. Obviously, we didn't shed light, because that wasn't our topic today, on what the tongue can commit of goodness. We spoke about the dangers of the tongue. But that's what the tongue is. It's a double-edged sword. It can be used in a good manner and utilized in a good manner. Uh, doing dhikr, reading Quran, doing da'wah, enjoying what is good and forbidding what is evil, reconciling between people, uh, and what have you and what have you. And it could be used and utilized in a bad manner, in an evil manner. To make sure that you use it in a good uh, in a good manner that brings you closer to Allah, that gains you Allah's pleasure, that inshallah leads you to paradise bi ithnillah. Allah mahdina li ahsani al akhlaq, la yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant, wa asrif anna sayyaha, la asrif anna sayyaha illa ant. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa akhidana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته